the Tanya Barnett Show, the flyest internet talk show out there. I am so happy that you decided to join me tonight. Make sure you make sure you share this with everyone that you know because I have a fantastic guest tonight. You're going to be inspired. You're going to walk away wanting to start that business that you've always had in your heart but wasn't sure if you can start it. You're going to come away knowing that you can be that 21st century woman that you choose to be. So the guest I have tonight is a phenomenal mom, mompreneur. She's a momager. She's an entrepreneur. She's a wife. And she found a need for something, and she created it. And so today's topic for today is you, you can't find it, create it. And so I'm really excited about my special guest. I also wanted to share with you today that we have another event coming up, me and my girl, Dominique Clark. We have an event coming up, the Art of Being a Wife Tour. That is going to be August 19th. We will be in Rock. Raleigh. So Raleigh, we are coming to you. If you want to join us there, the link for that is bit.ly forward slash wife tour two, then the number two. And we are excited about this. The DC event we just had about a week ago was phenomenal, ladies. If you missed that, you do not want to miss the Raleigh event. I'm telling you, it was all that in a bag of chips. We went over an hour. We had a wine tasting by OSIP, um, Tia Newton of OSIP. She's a wine connoisseur, and she's also a winemaker. She came and gave us a wine tasting. Um, so it was fantastic. We had fantastic sponsors, Black and Married with Kids. We had Blog Alicious, Sharice Jones of Sassy Jones Boutique. We had a lot of fantastic sponsors. So I'm really excited about today's show. I know you're going to be inspired, and I'll be right back with you for our special guest tonight. Listen vision. Listen, vision. Listen, vision. Listen, vision. DC's number one recording studio. Oh, 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 oh. Hey there, welcome back to the Tanya Barnett Show, the flyest talk show on the internet. I'm so super excited about my guest tonight. I'm telling you, she is going to wow you. So ladies, if you want to start a business, if you see a need for something, you're like, dang, I wish that this product was on the market or something to... Uh, Say, for instance, if it's something that deals with hair care or beauty or whatever, and you know there's, there's a product that you would just love to have, why don't you create it? So I'm going to bring my special guest on tonight. Her name is Rosalind Goodwin. She is the founder of Gabby Bowes. Roz, are you there? I am. How are you, sis? Hey! How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. I'm so super excited to have you. So, Rosalind, can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Well, my name's Rosalind Goodwin. I live in Columbia, South Carolina with my husband, comedian Mike Goodwin. Yes. <laughs> and my 10 year old daughter, Gabrielle Goodwin, my co inventor and co founder of Gabby Bowes, and our six year old son, Michael. Awesome, awesome. I am a healthcare lobbyist from nine to five. 
I also managed my husband's comedy career, and my daughter and I invented Gabby Bows about three years ago. Awesome. So you are a wifepreneur, mompreneur, nine to fiver, and you look fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> at eight o'clock at night, girl, you look good for somebody who does all of that. So I just want to give you your props, your kudos. If you haven't heard it today, you look fantastic. Thank you, girl. Thank you, girl. And I'm gonna spread right after this call. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. So really quick, before we start talking about you and what you do, um, one of the things I love to do is just to, to talk about how great it is to be able to support women just like you, African-American female entrepreneurs. That is my heart. That is my love. That is my passion. Because there's not enough people who support us. Of course, we see so many derogatory television shows um, that depict us in negative light. But the purpose behind the Tanya Barnett show is to show 21st century women who are doing the darn thing and who are com commanding a presence in their in their arena so I just thank you and honor you for being here with me tonight oh thank you so much for having me it's an honor. awesome awesome so I'm gonna get go jump right into our first question can you tell those who are not familiar with Gabby Bowles what it is and why you decided to create it because today's topic is if it doesn't exist create it so why did you start Gabby Bowles and what exactly is it Wow. wow. Well, I was wow. losing hair barrettes all of my life. My mom was losing hair barrettes all of her life. And then when I had my daughter, I loved styling her hair in barrettes, but was constantly frustrated because I would spend all this time doing her hair in school, pick her back up, and half of her barrettes were missing. Uh, so one Sunday afternoon, I got really frustrated and just got on Twitter to blow off some steam started complaining about the barrettes and how I couldn't find anything that would stay on her hair. A number of mothers went back and forth with me, and we were just kind of joking around. My pastor, Dr. Herbert Bailey, happened to be on Twitter that afternoon, saw my tweet, and replied simply, sounds like a market you need to break into. Wow. I wasn't trying to break into anything. I was already busy enough doing everything else that I just mentioned that I do. Um, um, so, so I, I honestly, honestly got, a got a little offended little that he even said something like that because my because pastor knows how busy I am. Mm -hmm. But then I almost got convicted because I felt offended mm -hmm. and just <laughs> okay. replied to him, yes, sir, I'll look right into it. And then sarcastically pray, you know, God, if there's something there, you're going to have to show it to me because I'm not trying to break into anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, at the time, my son was, I think, less than a year old he was nocturnal he refused to sleep at night he was only sleeping during the day oh wow my daughter was five um my demanding healthcare career was still of course going on and i just kind of put it to the side a couple mm -hmm. of days later as i was styling gabrielle's hair to take her to school i got so frustrated just thinking about her barrettes coming off Mm -hmm. I vented under my breath, like, well, somebody needs to make a bowl that will work. I didn't know that she heard me. She's five years old. She almost jumps out of her seat. She says, Mommy, are we going to make a bowl? And wow. I was like, no, that's not what I meant. That's not what I said. And I said something just to kind of brush her off. I figured she'd forget about it. But the first thing she asked me about when I picked her from school was, Mommy, when are we going to make my bowls? Wow. And she said that every day for weeks. Wow. And then eventually I said, okay, there must be some type of divine connection going on. Cause we'd even be in a grocery store. And she said, mommy, are my stove, are my bowls going to be sold in Publix? And she would ask <laughs> questions like that constantly. <laughs> right. So I, you know, although I had no background in science or engineering, I could even draw the idea I had. I did know from being taught from our pastors not to, crush our children's dreams mm -hmm. and not to teach them that things are impossible. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'll take her, I'll ride her faith on this. We'll treat it like it's a science project. Mm -hmm. At the most, we can uh, sell it to a major company and, you know, possibly put aside some money for college education. That's the largest, the wildest dream I had about the whole idea, but it mm -hmm. evolved into all of that it is today. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
That is very interesting. So how did you get started? For those who haven't have an idea or a concept for a product, um, how did you get started? I mean, where did you start? So we just sat down at the kitchen table. Mm -hmm. During the evenings, we take out all of her different barrettes. We would study what worked better on some barrettes than others. At the level of her comprehension, we just sit down and just discuss the ideas. So she said, well, you know, this one has teeth. Maybe this one works better because of that. So we just make notes. And then eventually, over several months, the concept came of a double face, double snap barrette. First double face. So you can always see the design, even when the hair moves. is a big pet peeve my mom has. Uh, <laughs> If you your hair turned, you would just see the back of the barrette. So that was one of the first problems we wanted to solve. Uh -huh. And then to make sure that the hair would not slip out of the barrette, the two faces with the center strip to wrap hair around, and then the teeth and the cradles on the inside of each face basically sandwiched and trapped the hair that it right. don't come out. And we've never lost a bow. It's been over four years since we first tested the product, even though we've been in business three wow. years. And families across the country, we've served... Uh, fill online orders in all 50 states and eight countries. They're all telling the nice. same thing that they don't lose Gabby bows. Wow. Wow. That is amazing. I'm telling you, I wish I knew you 20 years ago because <laughs> we've lost so many bows and I have two daughters. Um, and so, yeah, and my daughter's name is Gabby as well. And I, I yes. remember those days she would come home from daycare or school and bows were gone. And, you know, <laughs> and you constantly stayed purchasing bows because you, yeah, you know, just had to weeks. be perfect and, you know, had to match her outfits and, you know, all that stuff. And so, um, this is fantastic. So moms, if you're watching right now, you need to check out Gabby Bows, um, especially those of you who have little girls. Uh, you know the pain that you feel. If you never heard of Gabby Bows before, this is your opportunity to get out there. If you don't have little girls, purchase them. If you have nieces or granddaughters, neighbors, you know, it, it's, it'll make a great gift. Christmas is coming. I know I like to Christmas shop early. This is something that you could put to the side. So I think it's just fantastic, Roz, that you you saw something didn't didn't exist and you created it. And and that's pretty that's what this this show is all about. Creating opportunities and, and voids. Because there's a lot of voids out there. There's things that are missing um that we need. And people like you and and falling on, on the faith of your daughter, I just think it's fantastic that you trusted her. Um I think a lot yeah. of times as parents, our children say things to us and we just kind of lay it to the side or just, you know, discount it because they're children. But I just think it's awesome that you Gabby I mean the fact that you said when you picked her up she was still thinking about it, I'm, I'm just tickled pink because she was meditating on that thing all day yeah, for her was. to bring <laughs> you know you and her forgot about it you know you went on about your business and she really she birthed that thing herself as a yeah, little girl did. and so I just I commend you for being a mom who saw that in your daughter you saw that gift and, and you went forward with it so I just think that's fantastic so let me ask you and something. I mean I want people to understand that my background is healthcare. So I, like I said, when the idea came, I couldn't even draw it. Wow. But having the determination to just trust and obey God, mm -hmm. he opened the doors, he sent the right people. I mean, he sent the person to draw a 3D image of the idea. Mm. Then he sent us um, a connection to the manufacturer and then a connection wow. to the engineer, you know, Wow. step by step so a lot mm -hmm. of times people get immobilized by fear about okay how am i going to get this done right when all you need to do is make that first step right that first step and that sign that i obey and i trust you god opens up that next door and no i don't have a full blueprint which i'd love to have one for the next 10 years what's going to happen with gabby right. Rose. but i do know <laughs> that today i'm obeying the instructions i have and then once i obey those instructions next instructions come and i'm committed to obey those as well wow wow and when you said take that first step i i envisioned um immediately popped in my head a scene in indiana jones where his father was shot and he had to go and get something i can't remember what it was and he came to a cliff and his father just said take that step and yeah, once yeah. he took that step, a, a, a bridge appeared before him. And so that just popped in my head while you were talking. It's like, you know, we, we operate in, in fear so often that we're paralyzed and we don't take the step. And like you said, once you started moving, people just started coming in your direction. So I th that is fantastic that, you know, you talked about how important 
trusting God and believing God and then moving forward in that. Um, that is fantastic. So, Roz, stay right there. We will be right back after this break. This is Tanya Barnett, the Tanya Barnett Show. We'll be right back with my special guest tonight, Rosalind Goodwin. Listen, vision, listen, vision, listen, vision, listen, vision, DC's number one recording studio. This is Tanya Barnett, the host of the Tanya Barnett Show, the flyest internet talk show out there. We are back here after having heard and being inspired by none other than Rosalind Goodwin. This is our segment where we talk about She's Gotta Have It. And so She's Gotta Have It, if you're not familiar with that segment, that is where I spotlight and feature a black-owned business that I use and that I have to have. So today's black-owned business is Sassy Jones, none other than Sassy Jones Boutique, and that is Sharice Jones. The earrings that I have on today, these are by Sassy Jones Boutique. Yes, they are. And these are super, super fly. And then my bracelet as well is by Sassy Jones Boutique. So that is my She's Gotta Have It. So, Rosalind, are you still there? I am. Awesome. So, Rosalind, are you ready for the She's Gotta Have It segment? Yeah. yeah. I've got on some sassy, too, now that I'm thinking about Woo! it. Woo! Okay, okay. <laughs> nice, 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 but nice. But also today, I had to do some loads of laundry. Uh -huh. And I have to have my true laundry detergent. Yes. Black owned laundry detergent company. Yes. True laundry detergent. Awesome, awesome. So, and I use True Laundry Detergent as well. And actually, you can purchase True Laundry Detergent. It comes in two different sizes on Amazon.com. So you just type in True Laundry Detergent, and it's a black-owned business. And, and you really don't need a lot. I love the no. fact that it's a clear laundry detergent. It smells really good, and it really does get your, cl your clothes clean. So on our She's Gotta Have It today, my special guest, Rosalind, she uses True Laundry Detergent. And we both have on Sassy Jones and also got Zenobia as you have on. Yeah. <laughs> Those are gorgeous <laughs> on you, girl. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I love when my guests show up. I just love it, love it, love it. So Roz, uh, so you talked a little bit earlier about um, obeying God and moving forward. How do you deal with fear in your business? Or is that even an issue for you at this point? Oh, it's always an issue. Okay. We just do it afraid. Mm. We don't let it immobilize us mm, wow um, but it's certainly a struggle you know I, I deal with it that with the the love and trust of God of course the Bible talks about love casting out fear mm -hmm. uh, and just knowing that you know God didn't set us up and take us all the way here to leave us mm. and you know he's not setting us up for failure I mean I, I meditate on that and I think about that often you know, God didn't bring me out here and set me up for failure. Right. So whatever it feels like I'm fearful of right now, whatever these next steps are, even if there's a no or a big disappointment, mm -hmm. no good thing really withhold from me. So even though I think this thing is really good, it's not as good as he has planned for me. So that's right. how I deal with fear. Awesome. Awesome. And, and when I saw you in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago at TSP live, um, you share with us, well, you share with everybody, um, how Gabby interprets the word no. So can you share that with the, um, the viewers tonight? Yes. Uh, at just 10 years old, she's experienced no more than I have <laughs> at 40, but she's become so resilient because of that. And I really encourage parents to expose their children to resistance rejection early mm, because it builds good. that resilience and strength she's now at a point when she hears the word no she automatically turns the n and the o to next opportunity i love that not love saying that. that it doesn't sting or it doesn't hurt but it just doesn't keep her down mm. she thinks about it and says okay i'll process it yeah that hurt i wish that had happened but hey no just means next opportunity 
That is so good. That is so good. And a lot of adults can't even handle no. So the fact that she's um, able to process her no um, and know, okay, well, this isn't the, the, the business deal for me or the, the person I'm supposed to be uh, partnering with. There's somebody else who has a better proposition for me and my business. And so I just think that's so, so awesome. So, Rosalind, let me ask you this. Because you're a mom, mom, um, momager and a, a mompreneur, how much uh, hands-on do you have with Gabby Bowes? Um, or how, let me turn around. How much um, influence or control does Gabby have of her business? <laughs> Well, she, well, she has self-proclaimed as the president and CEO. Oh, okay. And I love it. <laughs> we made sure her, my my husband and I made sure to tell her, you know, that's not just some cute title. You know, mm -hmm. president and CEO means that you are the face and the voice of the company. You're the main one doing the sales. Mm -hmm. You're you're the main one out front speaking to groups. Mm. You know, you have um, ultimate control about what happens now of course we're her parents and we have to rein that in mm -hmm. so there, there are times that we'll say okay we're gonna let gabby decide whether she goes to this event or not okay we will um let her decide what direction she needs to go in so right now she's got two days of she's got a lot of writing of thank you cards and notes Aww. people who backed our kickstarter Okay. So she's got that responsibility to do that. And we've instructed mm -hmm. us that's what she's doing. But she's coming up with how she wants to do that, whether she wants to make a list, whether she wants to do these first, and then she wants to fulfill later. So mm -hmm. giving her that responsibility at the, at the, you know, the level of her comprehension and age that she can handle it, giving mm -hmm. her those responsibilities, and then letting her see what the result of those responsibilities are. You know, sometimes they don't go as she planned, but it's a good learning okay. lesson for her. So we do give her a, a lot of leeway and control with the business. And some of the times we know that it may not be the best decision, but it's always a good learning um, situation for her. That is so good. That's so good. I, I remember my pastor used to say that um, even if there's failure, failure is nothing but data collection. And yes. so it's, it's not something where it's the end of the world. You just take, okay, that didn't work. What did work? What can I learn from this? And then apply it for the next experience. So I think that's fantastic. Again, you as a mom allowing her to, you know, even down to writing thank you cards, how, how are you going to process that? What, what is your system going to be to do that? And it's so important. So if there's parents watching tonight, I'm telling you, these are some great lessons to teach you. Even if your child isn't a business owner, if they play sports, Sports, if, it, if they, you know, yes. play a, an instrument, um, you know, those type of things are really important because I think children have lost that a little bit. Um, I say to my children all the time when they ask me a question, I say, figure it out. Because I think a lot of times parents, we have um, made decisions and choices for our children. And then some kids can't function because they don't know how to make a make a decision. Then they have a meltdown <laughs> when they're faced with making a hard choice because they, they that's been taken away from them. So I think it's yeah, just fantastic. Yeah, that is so true. And we do that a lot with Gabrielle. And we're teaching her not only about responsibility of making a decision, but being able to make a decision timely and not wasting a lot of time. You got to make decisions faster than that. I need you to think through this. You got to be able to make decisions on your feet. Uh, so wow. we, we, we're constantly teaching her about that. There's a new product we'll be launching in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And I basically gave her the responsibility. I said, I want you to name it. Wow. And Whatever she said, and I knew that, okay, whatever she said, it may not be something that I would name it, mm -hmm. uh, but she actually came up with a really cool name. I said, okay, well, yeah, that's great. I wouldn't have thought about that, but right. I mean, it's her company. Right. This is something that, you know, once she has a daughter, you know, once she gets her own driver's license, I mean, she'll be a lot more independent in, she'll, you know, she wants to run the company with her daughter. Uh, so we're just setting her up. I love it. To be able to, you know, take it to a whole nother level. So the more responsibility we give her as she can handle it, the better. Wow, that is awesome. That's awesome. Well, Roz, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. I have a few more questions for you. And um, I thank you so much for holding on. And I thank you all for being here with us on the Tanya Barnett Show. We'll see you in a few minutes.
of the Tanya Barnett Show, the flyest internet talk show out there. I'm so super excited about my special guest that I have tonight, Rosalind Goodwin of Gabby Bowes. Thank you for holding tight, Rosalind. Oh, thank you for having me, sis. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so we're going to continue off the questions. Um, I know that you are, I call you the queen of pitching. <laughs> 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 Because every time I turn around, you're like, we, we got an opportunity to pitch this. We got an opportunity to pitch that. So can can you, for those who are not familiar with what pitching is, um, because a lot of women that are watching are future entrepreneurs or, or beginning entrepreneurs, can you tell them what pitching is and how you prepare for pitching? Well, pitching can come in a number of ways. Pitching can okay. come through pitching competitions in which you basically have a minute to maybe three minutes to share the the highlights of your business, the, the meat of your business in a way that is attractive to investors or people who are uh, very interested in business. So we've entered a couple of pitch competitions very early. Uh, there's one in particular called Innovate Her, which is a, a pitch competition through the Small Business Administration geared to women with products mm. catered to women and families. Uh, and we were fortunate to be chosen as the local pitch winner here in Columbia, Yay. South Carolina, and then advanced to the finals and even made it to the top 15 to pitch at the Washington Post. I think it was our, yeah, it was our first year of business, um, which was awesome. a whirlwind. And um, we came in fourth. On nice. The first First three prizes won money, though, so we were like one short of any dollars. <laughs> so that was that was one of the first big nose Gabrielle experience. As a, I think she was eight at the time, um, but that's kind of what it is. And I, I tell people all the time, pitching is just a really good exercise, whether it's in a competition or whether you're meeting somebody on the elevator. It's the same speech, and once you get that down, once you get that down to you know 90 seconds or less, or a minute or less. Mm -hmm. Whether you're on the elevator, in a competition, meeting someone, networking, you know what your key points are and you can be able to just um, get those out anytime. So, you know, my daughter is 10, but she's been pitching since we started. So if right. you go through our Periscopes or our Facebook Lives, she has the stand, same standard introduction, which is part of our pitch. That's right. how she introduces herself whether she's on camera, whether she's in an elevator or whatever, she knows what are the most important points about my business, what makes my business stand out, mm -hmm. what is something that I can say about my business that makes people want to say, well, tell me more. Right. Um, when you say my mommy and I solved the age old problem of disappearing girls' hair barrettes, people want to say, what you do to solve the problem? What did you do? <laughs> You invented something? <laughs> You're the youngest ever South Carolina Young Entrepreneur of the Year? Wow, tell me more. So she knows wow. how to say those things at first that make people want to listen more. So I tell people all of the time, it's a great skill every business owner should have, whether you have a product or a service, whether you say, well, I'll never enter a competition, you still need to know how to pitch. And entering local competitions can help you refine that pitch. Awesome. Awesome. And so when you guys go to pitch, it, is she the one doing the talking or are you? Um, okay. All right. So you, she's the one. Okay, Gabby. Gabby well, it, it depends. Okay. okay. It depends. Now, some competitions will be like, you know, you have to be 18 or older to participate. Okay. So she may have to be in the audience. Um, but most competitions let us pitch together. Oh, um, wow. And, and like I said, most of the pitch competitions or pitching opportunities we have aren't necessarily for money. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we, I always have her in the practice of pitching. Like there's an organization that's nationwide called One Million Cups. They meet weekly mm -hmm. across the nation and it's basically an hour of business people coming together mm -hmm. and you pick one or two businesses to pitch their business. They have about, about 10 minutes and then another 10 minutes for questions. But mm -hmm. that's a form of pitching. So we did that very early and it's free. Oh, wow. You're not competing for anything, but it helps you refine your pitch because everyone else there has a business mind and they're going to ask you questions to help you get better. Wow. That is fantastic, Roz. I, I love, I, I, I wish I had you as a mom. <laughs> Cause you, I mean, you are just, 
Every, everything you're saying is just great. Um, I love that you and Mike have that vision um, to lead your daughter uh, into her business. And so I just think it's fantastic what you're doing. Um, you're really setting her up for greatness. And so I'm just honored to have you here with us tonight and sharing with, you know, moms who are watching right now or even for someone who themselves say, hey, I want to start a business. I'm sure, you know, they're being in inspired as well. So I'm going to shift a little bit to you. How do you find time for, for me time or for self-care or, you know, do, do you take, do you do self-care? I don't do it as often as I should. Okay. Uh, but I do try to at least quarterly get a massage in. Mm -hmm. um, and I know like tomorrow I'm dropping my kids off for a couple of days with my parents. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know when my limit is, I know when I say, I know when I need a break. Mm -hmm. So I listen to my body. I pay attention to my reactions to my children mm. um, and I, I do whatever I need to do to say, okay, I, I need a break. I need, I need some time to focus. I need some time to recharge. I need some time just with, with my husband. Right. <laughs> um, and that's what we're going to be able to enjoy for a couple of days when I drop them off tomorrow. So that's kind of how I self care, but I sneak self care in, you know, okay. our schedule's pretty tight. So, mm -hmm. I think me time is me going to the grocery store by myself. Hey, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I just take a long time going down um, the cereal aisle, even though I don't want any cereal, but just not have anybody to ask you, mama, can I have lucky Charms? Right. Mommy, can I have honeycomb? Mommy, can I have, you know, <laughs> walking down the aisle and having that amount of time. I, I cherish it. It doesn't have to be a massage. It doesn't have to be, a uh, manicure or a pedicure, mm -hmm. I get me time in anytime I can. <laughs> and awesome. I really encourage all moms to do that because you may not be able to afford to get a manicure or a pedicure, right. but whatever it is, it may be just a walk, just some time by yourself. Um, awesome. And you awesome. go into the grocery store and they may have samples. You can just treat it like you treating yourself to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. And so what about exercise and eating right? Um, how important yes. is that to you? I'm telling you, exercise is something I have, and I guess probably in the last three years, have totally incorporated into my life. I'm mm -hmm. in the gym at 530, at least five times a week. Wow. In classes, um, because I need peer pressure. I need somebody okay. to ask me where I was if I don't, okay. if I don't okay. show up and I oversleep. Um, but I found that exercise adds to my day about an hour of um, alertness. Okay. So when I don't do it, I am sluggish mm. and I can feel it. You know, so I remember first lady Michelle Obama said this one time, she said, exercise is one of the few things we can actually do for ourselves. Wow. A lot of other things we say we're doing for ourselves, but it really has something to do with other people. Mm -hmm. um, but exercise is really something you do for yourself that really truly benefits yourself. So make yourself important and worth it enough to exercise. That is so good. That's so good. And I, and I know I have to be very intentional. Um, I have a, a, I'm a runner. So for me, my, actually I have a soul sister. I call her my soul sister. So we run together or walk. And so even when she's out of town, I have to set my alarm clock to say, Tanya, get up. I have a conversation laying in the bed, talking to myself yes. like, hey, you got to get up. If, if she was here, you'd be up and in the neighborhood at six o'clock in the morning. So <laughs> it's definitely really important, especially as we get older. And like you said, it does give you more energy. I do notice that when I don't work out, then I eat bad, <laughs> which, yes. which contributes to me feeling terrible. <laughs> Um, you know, but then when I do get up and run in the morning, then I'm very mindful throughout the day that I'm drinking water, that I'm eating, um, you know, consciously. Uh, so, yeah, definitely exercise is very important, especially as mompreneurs and wifepreneurs. It's just really key that we take care of ourselves because it's easy to, you know, make sure we book the kids appointments and dentist appointments yeah. and all those things. And then before we know it, we're getting postcards in the mail from the dentist saying it's been two years since you had your cleaning, but everybody else is, is good to go. So, um, so yeah, I just think it's really key that we also make sure that we take care of ourselves at all times. So regardless, ladies, of what you have going on, just even if it's 30 minutes. I know in the wintertime it was snowing really bad. I wound up having my Fitbit on, and I watched a documentary. It was a two-hour documentary, and I walked in place for two hours, and I wound up walking seven miles. 
Wow. <laughs> so, right. I had no clue. And I just That's stood in place. Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was, girl, I was sweating like somebody terrible. But, <laughs> you know, it was just really important for me. I was like, I got to get it in. I'm, I'm stationary. It's either I'm going to be laying in bed eating chips. Or I could yeah. walk in place while I'm watching this documentary. So you can stuff. get get it in, ladies. No excuses. Find the time. Take the stairs at work. Park your, your car a little further from your, your office building, even at the grocery store, mall, whatever it is. You know, find that time for yourself. So, Roz, thank you for encouraging my viewers to get out <laughs> there and take care of themselves. So, ladies, we'll be right back with closing remarks from my special guest today, Rosalind Goodwin, here on The Tanya Barnett Show. Hey there, everybody. This is your host, Tanya Barnett, the Tanya Barnett Show, the flyest internet talk show out there. I'm so super excited about my special guest today. Our topic was, if it does not exist, create it. And my special guest today is Rosin Goodwin. Welcome back, Ross. Thank you, Thank for, you having for having me. me. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, Ross, can you tell everyone where they can find you and Gabby Bowes? Sure. They can find us at GabbyBowes.com. That's G A B B Y. B O W S dot com. Awesome, awesome. And where do you have social media handles that, that they can follow you guys on? Yes. We're Gabby Bowes everywhere. Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Periscope, name it, we're there, all at G A B B Y B O W S. Awesome, awesome. And where can where can people find your products? So you can purchase online at GabbyBowes.com, but we're mm -hmm. also now in 50 Once Upon a Child stores in 16 states across the country. So from Charlotte to Jacksonville to Detroit, uh, places in California, Houston, Texas, uh, the Bowes are in several stores across the country. There's a store, store locator at GabbyBowes.com where you can okay. put in your zip code to see which store is closest to you. Awesome, Roz. Well, thank you so much. And so, Roz, can you leave us with one word of inspiration, whether it's a quote, a scripture, something that keeps you motivated, something that keeps you going on those days when you're like, you know what, I'm done with this. Just, just give us something that you use to inspire yourself. Well, a lot of people ask me all the time, how do you do it all? And my, my simple response is I don't. Mm. You know, men in America have enjoyed the luxury um, that has afforded them to get to a certain level of success. And that's called a wife. <laughs> I say that every multitasking mama needs a wife. I call my mother-in-law my wife. Um, I have several wives. Uh, my mother-in-law just helps me a lot with the kids and other things. You may need a hairstylist wife who helps with your children's hair or mm -hmm. um, a, a cooking wife, um, which, you know, I, I have a, a restaurant that prepares meals by the pound, everything's fresh. And awesome. so I'm not cooking every day. So there are a lot of hacks in my life that I recognize mm. that because I am a mom, a momager and a wife a and a <laughs> wife and uh, a lobbyist and all these type things, I don't put the type of pressure on myself to be all these things that we have in our mm. head that we have to be. So I will cook on the weekends. I'm gonna throw down on the weekends, but during the week, I just don't have time. And I found a healthy alternative for, to make sure that my children are eating healthy and that's my cooking wife <laughs> which wow. is a, a restaurant down the street but i ask for help um mm. through grace and prayer and help so don't feel like you've got to do it all by yourself and don't ever feel like you've got to have it all together i put things in that's place good. to make sure i 
know that I won't always have it together. I think I shared with you before. I keep a toothbrush, toothpaste, and mouthwash in my car because I right. might just forget my hygiene because I'm in such a hurry <laughs> with my kids, making sure they brush their teeth. I'm like, wait a minute, did I brush my teeth? Right. So I don't even put myself in a predicament that I'm all concerned about it. I keep it right. in my car. If I'm traveling somewhere, even though I may have an idea where I'm going, I always use my GPS. Because there have been times that I've been driving and I end up somewhere else because there's so much on my mind. Wow. So I put things, guardrails in place to make sure that I don't feel like a failure because I've got these things as backup just in case I do slip. Wow. And you got to give yourself that grace. Yes. Give yes. yourself grace. Yes. And that is so true. I mean, everything you're saying, I know that I've gotten somewhere and I'm like, Lord, I don't miss my turn, my, my <laughs> exit, you know, because you, your brain gets programmed to go one way yeah. when you have to go other places. And so I like that you, you, you hit on so many key points. You said giving yourself some grace, letting yourself know that you don't have to have it all together, because I think a lot of times we see all these images on social media and we're like, dang, she's doing it all, but not realizing there may be some times where, you know, you have a cute top on, but you may have your pajama pants and, and flip flops <laughs> on, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that you, you don't have red bottoms on sitting at your kitchen table. That just may not be your reality, but that's, that's the type of pressure people put on themselves when they see us. And I love that, that you said that you have somewhere that prepares your meals. And so, you know, for us as women, not to feel guilty about that. Christine saying, she freed me up one time when she said that she has someone that does their laundry. She said, I hate doing laundry. And so that's something that I pay somebody to do. And I was like, yeah. well, dang, you know, and, and but, you know, we were raised to do it all that you have no. to be this superwoman. And then you feel like a failure when you forget to take a load of laundry out of the washing machine is moldy or, you know, sour and you got to wash it again. Um, so, you know, definitely giving ourselves grace um, to not have to do it all. There are some times where I'm just, I put stuff on my to-do list for tomorrow. I'm just like, okay, I'm not getting to it. There's times where I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm shutting off. I'm going to bed. I'm going to watch some Netflix till at nine o'clock. And I have to be okay with that. Whereas before yes. I would kill myself trying to stay up till one, two o'clock in the morning because I just got to get this one or two things done. Now I'm like, you know what, if I get to it today, I get to it. If I don't, I don't. And it's going to be okay. You know, because so I know my be, husband will climb the in the bed. He climbs in the bed and don't think nothing about nothing. Here I am worrying about <laughs> the next thing I got to do and he sleep. You know, so you rolling your eyes at him mad because <laughs> he's knocked out and you have this laundry list of stuff that you want to get done. So thank you, Roz, for freeing us up. I think that was great advice. Um, so those of you who are struggling, trying to do it all. Roz just told you, you don't have to. There's no, no rules in this. What works for you and your family is what works for you and your family. And so, you and you know, some to. people might say, well, I don't have the money to get somebody. Now, I didn't say I have a personal chef. I found <laughs> a restaurant that cooks by the pound. It's not on demand. Um, but my family has just said, gotten like during the week, this is the menu. This is what they're serving. This is what we're going to eat. Um, so I'm not at personal chef status yet. <laughs> or even I have someone who comes in every two weeks that just cleans basic stuff, like just mm -hmm. like the floors mm -hmm. and the bathrooms. I couldn't mm -hmm. afford to have somebody to come and clean the baseboards and clean out the refrigerator and do the laundry and those type mm -hmm. things. So I got the Pinto plan. I couldn't okay. do Cadillac right now. So I got my Pinto cleaning <laughs> plan. But for that, you know, that one time every two weeks, I can walk in my house and it be clean. Right. <sighs> Right. The feeling is amazing. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. And my kids, you know, they'll mess it up in a couple of days. But just for that day, we walk in. I'm like, look at this place. This wow. is how mommy likes to feel when she walks in. Right. right here. Right. And that feeling is priceless. And I'm not paying a whole lot of money for it. Right. Um, but you can find somebody who will help you. I mean, the person who comes is, you know, someone at our church is very inexpensive. So, I mean, there are people around who will help you if you ask. Wow. And you'd be amazed of the pressure that relieves for you to be able to focus on what you need to focus on. That is so, so good. So, ladies, you heard it from this fantastic mompreneur, wifepreneur, Rosalind. Get help. Ask for help. It does not make you less of a wife. It doesn't make you less of a mother. And it certainly doesn't make you less of a woman if you Amen. ask for help. So I'm just going to leave it at that. 
Rosalind, thank you so very much for being my guest tonight. It has been an honor. I am just tickled that you are my sister. <laughs> um, Love you so much, you. sis. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, Roz, um, I hope that, you know, people were blessed by tonight. Um, and I just appreciate you so much. And please give Miss Gabby a hug for me. I will. I will. Awesome, awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, right after this break, I'll be right back, and Roz, we'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Listen vision. Listen, vision. Listen, vision. Listen, vision. Listen, vision. DC's number one recording studio. Oh, oh. of the flyers internet talk show out there the tanya barnett show i'm so super excited that you are here with me tonight so that video you just saw is some of the things that my nonprofit does my nonprofit is forever free books we give away free kids books to low income low income children here in the maryland dc area as well as we've sent books as far as india bahamas and we have some other great countries coming up in the mix so i'm really excited about that so we have an event coming up on April, uh, April, August 11th. It is our three-year anniversary. So yay, go me. Most nonprofits do not last to the third year. And so I'm really super excited about um, celebrating our anniversary here um, in the D.C. area. It's going to be at the Harborside Hotel on a Friday night at, uh, I believe, 6 p.m. Um, and you can join us there. You can go to bit.ly forward slash FFbooks three years. And you can join us there. It's totally free. We just want to thank our visitors. We want to thank our visitors, our supporters, our volunteers, our community partners. We want to thank all of you for supporting us for the last three years at Forever Free Books. So I'm really super excited about our upcoming anniversary. I want to make sure that you join us at Forever Free Books. So to close out tonight, I just want to thank you all 
for joining me tonight. I am honored to have my special guest, Rosalyn Goodwin of Gabby Bowes. Uh, she and her daughter are doing amazing things on their entrepreneurship journey, and it has been amazing to just watch the transformation of her. So without further ado, if you want to uh, receive any of my support, The Real Wife Movement, that's my mug here, my book, Being a Wife Just Got Real, you can go to my website, which is realwifemovement.com, where we talk about all things love, sex, and marriage, as well as if you're single, you can go on there and find some information about how to keep a mate. I just recently wrote a blog post um, about my husband and I had to fight for our marriage. We just celebrated 18 years, yay. Um, and so it's just really important for me that I share with you all the journey that I had and then I help you so that you can have a fantastic marriage and relationship with the men that you love. Uh, so make sure you check me out at therealwifemovement.com. I have a blog there. I have some special things going on there. I have phone cases, you name it. Whatever you want, I got it for you, and I'm so super excited. And also, make sure you, you check out me and Dominique Clark. Again, we have the Art of Being a Wife tour coming up. That is next month in Raleigh, North Carolina. We have some fantastic uh, sponsors. We have a jewelry vendor who's going to be there on the scene, and so we're just really excited. Um, we also have a paint and sip, so you'll be able to actually leave not only getting information about how to have a healthy relationship, but you'll also come away with a beautiful painting, and it's just going to be a lot of fun, ladies. We have a lot of fun in store for you. So I'm Tanya Barnett, the host of the Flyest Internet Talk Show, the Tanya Barnett Show. Make sure you check me out next week. My special guest next week is none other than Tamika Johnson. She is an author and she's also a ghost writer. So we're going to find out what a ghost writer does and how you can seek out her services. So thank you again. I'll chat with you later. This is Tanya Barnett, the host of the Tanya Barnett Show. It's the Tanya Barnett Show. Your life.